I want to thank you again, Miss Margie. It's real nice of you to buy this old trunk from our church rummage sale and junk around them. The money helped pays for our boys' camp. Oh, I enjoyed it, Charlie. I'm always curious about old trunks like this. You never can tell what you'll find in them. Forgotten money, maybe? Diaries? Old love letters? If there's any old love letters in this trunk, I sure hope it don't bring you no bad luck like some I had did me. Now, Charlie, how could old love letters bring you bad luck? My wife found them, and she wasn't an old love. <laughs> Put it in the den, will you, Charlie? Yes. Anything wrong, Mr. Albright? Oh, Charlie, what's the idea of sneaking up behind a man and scaring him to death? What's the matter, Dad? What are you doing home this time of day? Oh, I had to leave the office. I'm in a little trouble. Someone, someone is looking for me. Mr. Albright, I gotta hide out where the cops will never find me. Oh, the police aren't after me. I'm, I'm trying to duck a process server. Uh-oh, a subpoena, huh? Who's suing you? Well, actually, they're suing a client of mine. But as his business advisor, I'm included. All I want to do is avoid service for a couple of days to give my client time to dig up some evidence. You mean he buried it? Man, that show sounds rigor mortis. Oh, for heaven's sake, Charlie, this is a civil suit. Now, all I want you to do is stall any strangers that come around looking for me. Tell them, I, tell them I'm out of town for a couple of days, okay? Yes, sir, Mr. Albright. You know, you've been real nice to me, and I'm going to stick by you no matter what you've done. <laughs> This client has got you all involved, Dad. Do I know him? No, and you're not going to. I'm having enough trouble dodging subpoenas without having to dodge you at the same time. You know, Dad, sometimes I sense that you don't trust me completely. Well, that's an understatement if I've ever heard one. Hi, Charlie, my boy. How's the superintendent of maintenance this sunny afternoon? Fine, Mr. Wilson. If you're looking for Miss Margie, she's home. Well, as a matter of fact, I was looking for my old chum and sparring partner, Mr. Albright. Is he home? <laughs> yeah, but he ain't feeling so chummy. He's hiding from someone trying to serve him with a subpoena. Well, oh, that should make my first day on the new job a smashing success. What is your new job? Serving subpoenas. <laughs> That's no subpoena. That's a time bomb. And I'm getting off of this floor before it explodes and goes off. Now remember, if it's anyone we don't know, tell them I've left for Europe. Greetings, cat. How's this and that? Slip me some skin. Okay, ollie ollie out and free. It's only Freddy. Oh, for once, I'm glad to see you. Well, that's what I like, Pop. Affection. I just dropped by to tell you I've got a job. Really, Freddy? Sure, come on, I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> yes, sir, today I officially informed the unemployment office that I am no longer taking from them. You mean to say someone was foolish enough to hire you? What is your job, pulling gum off theater seats? I'm an assistant to a very important firm of private investigators. My job is to find lawbreakers and bring them to justice. You mean you're a private eye? Ha! Huh. You couldn't find a wad on the end of your nose. Oh, no? Well, I managed to make good on my first assignment. Yes, sir, Wilson got his man. Well, who was it, Freddy? If this chowder head found him, he must be the world's biggest jerk. Well, yes, yes, I guess you could call him that. Mr. Albright, I must ask you a question. Are you Vernon Albright of Honeywell and Todd? Of course I am, you idiot. Well, then say so, unless you're afraid to admit it. Afraid to? Why, you... All right, I'm Vern Albright. You want to make something out of it? Yes. I would like to make a service. Here is your subpoena. He's sure fast on his feet. He must have gone down the back stairs. Well, what are you laughing about? I suppose this is a big joke. Well, now, don't flip, Dad. You can't blame Freddy. He was only doing his job. Come on, be a sport. Okay, I'll be a sport. And now I'm going to see my client and try to convince him to be a sport. And if Freddy shows up there, it's going to be open season. <laughs> Are you 
Georgie Albright at the Carlton Arms, New York, New York. Freddie, so that's how you shook off the angry parent, huh? <laughs> I sure gave him the business, didn't I? Hey, is this private eye bit on the level? No, it sure is. Of course, I'm only sort of an assistant to start with, but I made good on my first assignment, and all I need is one big break, and I'll get my badge. My boss promised me. Well, climb out of the trunk. There may be some clues in there, along with the body. Body? <laughs> yes, yours. I got this old trunk at a rummage sale. Hey, help me look through it. There's no telling what we're liable to find. Hmm. Somebody's diary. Margie! Huh? What's the matter? It's the diary of a murderer. A murderer? Freddie, have you flipped? It says so right here. Look. Today I could stand it no longer. I killed him and I'm glad. I killed Wrongley Brentwood, the motion picture director, and disposed of his body in the old Zenith Studios on Long Island. Who wrote it? Whose diary is it? It doesn't say. Here's some old letters. The name is Mr. Roland Roberts, and it's a Park Avenue address. Roberts, huh? Then he must be the murderer. Now, Mr. Roberts, what has this missing diary of yours got to do with the plagiarism suit? <laughs> plagiarism? <laughs> the humiliation of it! I, the great Roland Roberts, sued by a, a goulash scribbler like Ladislas Vodubny. And why? Because he claims he wrote an unproduced play with the same general plot as my current Broadway success. How dare he! Oh, oh now, now don't get yourself all upset, Mr. Roberts. Here. <laughs> Take a bromide. No, oh, fizz. I can't stand the noise. <laughs> oh, you still haven't explained about that old missing diary. Why is it so important? It's very simple, Albright. Some years ago, I was employed as a scenario writer at the old Zenith Studios. I developed an acute loathing for the director, an emotion common to most screenwriters. <laughs> this director... An untalented lackey, one Ranley Brentwood, annoyed me so much that, as an emotional outlet, I, I kept a diary of my homicidal feelings toward him. <laughs> I even murdered him. <laughs> On paper, that is. Oh, oh, now I get it. Movie writer kills director. Uh, that's the plot for your new play. Exactly. And my diary will prove that I had the idea years before I ever heard of this impudent Badubny. Um, do you have any idea where it is? It may be in an old trunk I gave my housekeeper. I'll check when she gets back. She's gone to a, uh, to a rummage sale at her church. But, but suppose it's not there. I can still establish priority. <laughs> I used the identical plot line in an old yarn I wrote for Zenith. They never used it, of course. Too good for them. But it's probably in the studio file somewhere. If I can't find the diary, we'll check out there. Well, we've got to find one or the other. Uh, this suspense is making a nervous wreck out of me. Take a pill. Here. Good for your ulcer. Hmm. Uh, no, thanks. I, I don't have an ulcer. Nonsense. No self-respecting businessman is without one. They are standard equipment for executives. <laughs> thanks. I'll call you later. There, you see? Your ulcer is responding already. <laughs> What do you mean, call the police? This is my big chance. Yeah, to get killed. Look, Freddy, if this is on the level... On the level? You don't think anybody writes down a murder confession as a gag? Well, maybe not. But at least check with the police. Find out if this movie director actually did disappear. I mean, let's not go off on this thing half-cocked. Look, Margie, if you're chicken, okay, but I'm going over to this Roberts place and see what I can find. If I can get the goods on this murder, why, I'll be a famous private eye overnight. Well, all right. But I'd better go along to see that you don't end up a dead one. This is the apartment. 
Well, sneak in through this door. It's probably a bedroom or a kitchen. Well, why don't we just go around and get into the fire escape? There's one out there. I saw it. Who's the private eye here? You don't think I'd be dope enough to sneak in through a fire escape when I got a skeleton key, do you? Where did you get all those? You look like the jailer in the Bastille. Out of my boss's desk. There's a skeleton key here that'll open anything. You mean to say you sold that old trunk of mine? No, sir, I didn't sell it. I donated it to the church, and they sold it at our Junkarama. Junkarama? <laughs> My brainchild disposed of at a Junkarama. Oh, ye gods, is everybody a critic? I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts. I didn't know there was anything valuable in it. Now I'll just have to go out to the Zenith studio and look for that outline. from top to bottom. Oh, I'm sure sorry about that trunk, Mr. Roberts. I hope it won't mean any trouble to you. If what's in that trunk falls in the wrong hands, it will be disaster, not trouble. Looks like you were right. That's the killer. Hello? Hello, Mr. Roberts. Uh, this is Vern Albright. Did your housekeeper get back? Did you find the diary? No, it's gone. Disposed of at a rummage sale. No way to find out who's got it now. They didn't keep any records, naturally. We've got to get out to Zenith. We've got to dig that thing up. He's got an accomplice. They're going out to the studio and dig up the body. Okay, get a car and pick me up and we'll go out to the studio. We'll go out there and catch him in the act. All right, I'll wait downstairs for you. Goodbye. There's a whole nest of them back there. The chief here will send you a detailed report. Bye now. Hello, George. Remember me? Oh, yeah, sure. I remember you, Mr. Roberts. The, the office left word you would be out. Something about an old script, they said. I'm looking for an outline I wrote when I worked here. You think it could still be around someplace? Well, yeah, maybe it's stored in the script vault. <laughs> you know Zenith. They never throw anything away. <laughs> Come along. i show you the script vault. Oh, say, this sure is a spooky setup. Looks like it hasn't been used since the days of the old silent movies. Oh, that's where you're wrong, sir. It, it was used just today. But, but those cobwebs there. Just props, old man. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we make them with this. I'll show you how that works. Now, uh, you just keep your eye on the skeleton. What do you know? It puts the spiders out of a job. <laughs> George, isn't that the same trick chair we used in the old two-reelers? Yeah, sure, that's the one. Watch this, Albright. Now, the chair's okay to sit down in, but the moment you lean back, it releases a trigger and presto. That was always good for a yak. <laughs> we got a million of them. A trap door on the floor over here. I, I show you. <laughs> Wait to see this one. <laughs> now you see, this unlocks it. <laughs> now watch. <laughs> a 
anything for a laugh. <laughs> oh, this place fascinates me. <laughs> Show him how the window seat works. Yeah, sure. Like this way, sir. <laughs> now, this has a phony bottom. You hide the body in here, it falls right through. Now I know what they mean by a comedian killing himself for laughs. No one gets hurt. Uh, there's a net underneath. The actors slide down a chute right into it. <laughs> well, I will go and then I'll unlock the script vault. <laughs> I can hardly wait to see the moth <laughs> fly out of all them old yokes. <laughs> Am I seeing things or are those holes where the eyes should be in that picture? That's right. A rudimentary device used in mystery films. The actor stands on the other side of the wall and spies on people in here. <laughs> to think that you worked here in the old days. What memories you must have. They only serve to remind me that this is the historic spot where my ulcer was born. <laughs> there it goes again. Happy homecoming, old friend. <laughs> Let's find the script vault. Well, let's get at it. Well, this could take us weeks. Uh, maybe save time to look over this section. Most of the old scripts is here. like we got here ahead of him. Freddy, when are we going to call the police? Margie, I told you, we have to find the corpus delecti first. That way we get credit for solving the whole case. If we live that long. Margie, relax. We'll duck out of sight before they show up. Come on. <coughs> Heaven's sakes, it was only a cat. Come on. <coughs> It's the victim. They've hung him. Come on. Let's get the police. Wait a minute. <laughs> this isn't a body. It's a dummy. Come on. Let's go find the real one. You sit here and keep an eye on the door. I'll take a look around. Hey, look. That window seat would hold a body. Oh, no, that's too obvious. Now, let's see. If I had a corpse to stash, where would I stash it? <laughs> no! You were right, Freddy. Nothing in here. Freddy? Freddy? Where are you? Don't worry. It's here someplace. You will find it. I, uh, I gotta go make my rounds. I've seen so many of them two real comedies, I, I'm beginning to imagine them. <laughs> oh no, now it's dogs. Okay, Rofer, come out of there. You wouldn't shoot a poor little dog, would you? <laughs> You 
honked him, Freddy. He was about to shoot me. He must be the killer's accomplice. That means they haven't found the body yet. I know I found it. I mean, what's left of it. Just bones. Bones? A skeleton. <gasps> this one's locked. Go find George and get the key, will you, Albright? Maybe the murderer is here, too. We better hide. The window seat. Oh, George! That's him, the killer himself. Just a prop. Let's get out of here. You stay here and keep anybody covered who comes around. Me? I'll go get the police. What do you mean, only? It may be dated, but it's still purest Roland Roberts. How do you know about that diary? Because I've got it. I found it in an old trunk I bought at Charlie's Junkorama. So if you gentlemen want to win that suit, you'd better be very sweet to me. Looks like she's got us all right. I only hope she'll be easier to deal with than that second-rate mole now who's trying to sue me. <laughs> My arm, lady. Margie, is that idiot Freddie Wilson in on this with you? I thought so. Now, where is he? I'll fix his silly face for serving that subpoena on me. Now, where is he? Speak up. Does that answer your question, Dad? Well, baby, I have no complaints to make about the results of your little escapade, but I wish you'd make me a promise. You just name it. That you'll never buy any more old trunks at rummage sales. Agreed. I promise, concur, swear, and otherwise signify obedience to your wishes. I don't like it. It was too quick and too easy. Much too easy. Well, not at all, Dad. I promise not to buy any more old trunks because I found two old trunks of yours stored in the basement. No murders, of course, just an old diary and some love letters that are pretty hot items. Do you want me to burn them or just let them smolder to death? Well, <laughs> that's my little Margie. <laughs> 